Hello, this is Mr. Gilmore with the 12.2 volumes of simple solids. So in our first lesson, we looked at the surface area of the simple solids. Now we're going to be looking at the volumes, which means let's fill this space, right? Let's fill the space that those pointies and roundies. So let's begin. We will measure the volume of our simple solids using what's called a unit cube. It's simply a cube with a length edge length of one. One what? Well, you define what unit you want to pick. Inch, meter, mile, parsec, you name it. You can then define how much you want the cube or how large you want the cube to be uh, in filling that space. But the unit cube is the typical unit used to define the volume of a solid. Now, uh, the again, the unit cube, we're not going to uh, be worried about units. So if you see, do see a unit on example, just, just pay no attention to that unit on the example. Where we begin with the volume, right? The volume of a solid is the number of those unit cubes it takes to fill the solid without gap or overlap. We've talked about this last phrase, without gap or overlap, uh, because if we actually have gap, then there's too much or too less, right? We didn't count enough of the volume. But if there's overlap, it's too much. We've counted too much of those unit cubes. So now what we're going to be investigating in this last lesson is the volume of our simple solids. And we'll be looking at what are those formulas that help us find the volume of these simple solids. So let's first begin with the volume of a cube. The volume of a cube is very simple. You find out what the edge length of your cube is. So let's say the edge length of the cube is s, and you cube it. It's simply just s times s times s. I don't have an example of this here, but a very simple example would be, let's say the side length is 2. Okay. So if we have a side length of 2, we can use our volume formula here. It's just then 2 cubed, or in other words, 8. So there's the volume of our cube uh, if it had a side length of 2. Right, the volume would be eight, and again, we're not concerned about the units of the of the volume. But if we were to give this a unit, we could say it's eight cubic units. Eight cubic units is what we would say. Uh, as we uh, upgrade from a simple uh, cube to a right prism, we can actually find the volume of right prisms very simply. All we have to do is find the area of the base. Okay, which is like this shaded region down here, this uh, face of the bottom here, and we multiply it by the height, and that's going to give us our third dimension, which is going to then calculate the volume. So the volume of a right prism is simply the base times the height. We'll actually see an example here of a little bit of finding the volume of a of a uh, one of our simple solids, a prism, by using this formula. There's also an alternate version of this. It's specifically for the rectangular prism. This is one you may see uh, before. Uh, where if you're given the dimensions of a box, you can find out what that volume of the box is by simply multiplying those dimensions together, the length, the width, and the height of the prism, and or of the rectangular, uh, right rectangular prism. So we just do length times width times height, and bam, that's going to give us the volume of a rectangular prism. So it's an alternate version, because the length and the width, if you multiply those together, that is, if we multiply those together, that is the area of the base, which means if you just do base times height, that again gives you the volume. Let's do an example. So this actually is a right rectangular prism, which means we can find the volume very simply by multiplying the length times the width times the height. It's very simple here. We've got our length, we've got our width, and we got our height of this. So we simply, we got our, let me grab the actual height of that. We've got the actual height of that is 5, and we multiply that all through, and we get a volume of 60. So there's the volume of a right rectangular prism. Just again, length times width times height. And we've got ourselves the volume. Now, let's move on to a cylinder. A cylinder is almost identical to the same formula of the volume of a rectangular or of a right prism. Um, now, if the cylinder, right, has a base of a, which is really a circle, then the base area is always the same, pi r squared. So simply take the base and say, oh, the base is really just pi r squared. And what that does is it turns our volume formula into this. It's really just pi r squared times h, which really means all you need is the radius of the cylinder and the height of the cylinder, and you can find its volume. Let's do an example. So what is the volume of a cylinder with radius 8 and height 10? Well, that volume formula, again, is just pi r squared times h. Well, our radius is 8, our height is 10. Let's plug in what we know. So the radius, 8 squared, the height, 10. We then can simplify this, and we get a total of 600 and 40 pi. And I'm going to leave pi in my answer to leave it exact. So there we have it, the volume of our cylinder. And so make sure you have that formula written down. It's going to help you calculate the volume of your cylinders. 
Now, we talked about the difference between right prisms and oblique prisms, right? The right prisms are where the bases are lined up exactly with each other, top over or the top over the right over the bottom. But the obliques is where it's at a slant. Now, there's actually we can find the volume of obliques the exact same way we can find the volume of our right prisms. They have the exact same formulas. If you go back in the last two slides and look, those are the exact same formulas that we saw, which then means that the volumes of obliques can also be calculated. Now, in order to do this, we tip our hat to Cavalieri's pr uh, principle. If you're not familiar with Cavalieri's principle, uh, don't worry about it. But if you're curious, you can Google it and you can find out what it actually states. So we can actually calculate the volume of this oblique hexagonal prism here because the volume is the same as if it was a right hexagonal prism. The volume is just simply the area of the base times the height. Well, in this example, I give you both of those. The base area is 28. The height is 12. So we just simply just plug that in. So the volume is 28 times 12. And we simplify that, we get a volume of 336. So you can find if they are slanted or if they are right, volumes are very nice, especially with obliques or rights. Surface area is the tricky one. We stick with right prisms with surface area. Now, the volume of a pyramid. Now, the volume of a pyramid works almost identical to the volume of a prism, but right, we're not actually filling the entire space a prism would. So the pyramid is actually, uh, there's a neat kind of formula behind it, but it's really just one third the area of the base times the height. So we find the area of the base B, multiply it by the height of the pyramid, divide by three, and we've got ourselves the volume of it. Now, remember, in a pyramid, there are two different heights. There's the altitude height and there's the slant height. This is the altitude height H, okay? But that, that relationship still holds. We saw in pyramids earlier where if you have the height and you uh, connect it to the slant height, it actually forms a right triangle, which means this relationship still holds. So make sure you uh, remember that relationship just in case you need to convert the slant height into the height because in volume you need the height whereas in the surface area we needed the slant height so today this is what we need we need to know the height of our pyramid not the slant height let's take a look at an example now with volume again uh, we don't actually need the bases of our pyramid or really the bases of our prisms to be uh, regular. They're nice when they are regular, but they don't have to be. Um, so we can actually find the volume of this pyramid, even though the base is not a regular polygon. It's a rectangle, actually. We can still find the area of the base, and we're given the height of this pyramid. We can find out what the volume is. So to find the area of the base, it is just a rectangle, so it's 10 times 8, right? It's the dimensions of the base, so 10 times 8. So we know the base area is 80. We're given the height is 6, right? That's actually the altitude that we have here working with, okay? That's the, that's the height we need. And let's take a look at the volume equation again. It's one-third times the area of the base times the height, which means plug in what we know. Area of the base is 80, height is 6. We simplify that to get 160 there's the volume of our pyramid. So again, make sure you have this volume formula written down for the area of, or so the volume of a pyramid. Let's move on to a cone. A cone's volume is very similar to that then of the pyramid's volume. We see that one third again, but it's the one third of a cylinder's volume. Pi r squared h calculates a cylinder, but if we divide that by three, it gives us the volume of the cone. Again, what we need is we do not need the slant height. We need the height. So that's what we need in this case. So make sure that when we're working with uh, volume, we work with the height, not the slant height just yet. Okay, slant height is with surface area. Let's take a look at an example to find the um, area of uh, just the volume of a cone. Now, in this example, they have given us uh, something interesting. They've given us the radius is 8, but they've given us the slant height. Oh, no, we don't want the slant height. We need the height. How do we get that? Well, that relationship still holds that we investigated with surface area. If we look at that again, it's really a right triangle that connects the radius, the height, and the slant height. So we can plug in what we know, and this time we're solving for the height. So to save us some time, I went ahead and figured out what that height is. The height is, in this case, 4 root 5. So now we can jump into our volume formula. It's 1 third times pi times the radius squared times h. 
Now plug in what we know. One third pi of our radius is eight squared. Our height is four root five. Simplifying all that, it doesn't actually simplify uh, very much, but we get 256 pi root five all over three. There's not a common factor between three and 256. Uh, so that pi and root five also gets stuck in there, but there's our volume, okay? And remember this relationship up here, that that's if you're given the slant height, you can find the height. And if you're given the height, you can go back and find the slant height. So just keep that in mind. Our last two volumes we're looking at is the volume of a sphere and the volume of a hemisphere. So the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. It's very simple. All you need is the radius of your sphere and you can find its volume by plugging it into this formula. Let's use this in an example. So the volume of our hemisphere is four thirds pi r cubed. Okay, not squared, but cubed, right? Because we want a third dimension there. So we plug in, in our example here, we're given it's a radius of six. We plug that in. We'll do six cubed. We'll multiply that by four thirds and simplify. And we end up with 288 pi is the volume of that sphere. Very simple to find the volume sphere. All you need to know is the radius. But we can also find the volume of a hemisphere. Now, this one really is just half of the volume of a sphere because we're filling the space, not actually uh, covering the surface. We're filling the space. So it really is just two thirds pi r cubed. So again, we have that r cubed to get that third dimension. Let's look at an example of using the volume of a hemisphere. So find the volume of a hemisphere with a diameter of 16. Uh, they're going to throw us off a little bit because diameter is 16. We can need the radius though. So radius is eight. Let's plug that into our volume formula. The volume formula of a hemisphere is two thirds pi r cubed. Let's plug that in. So we cube it. Unfortunately, there's nothing divisible by three out of all that. So our volume is going to be stuck looking like this. 124 or 1024 pi all divided by three and there's the volume of our hemisphere. So volumes are really nice. We like filling space rather than painting that surface. So surface area is our 12.1, or whereas finding volume is our 12.2. And that actually is the end of chapter 12. Find the surface area of solid, simple solids and finding the volume of simple solids. And be sure to work on the 12.4 worksheet, or 12.1, sorry, 12.1 and 12.2 worksheets and begin reviewing for your test. And with that, be good and do good.